Welcome back to the Boys of Summer. Been a good winter. Glad to be back. I'm Jeremy, here of course with Mac. Yo, what's going on everybody? And special guest Tanner. Thanks for having me. So today, we're kicking off the new season, 2019. 2019 guys, it's summertime and we are back. And we are back with a... We're going strong. We're going strong this week. Coffee. With black coffee. Black coffee. <laughs> Still, uh, we're here with a guy. controversial figure, at least in his past. We're going to talk about that. Um, he's not squeaky clean like Denzel and Tom and like nope, we've been doing. Nope. Today, we're going to talk about the bad boy from Boston himself, Marky Mark. <laughs> Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Wahlbergers. Donnie Wahlberg's little brother. Yeah. You know who Marky Mark is? No, who's that? Of course not. You're 14 year old. How would you know who Marky Mark is? You know um, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. But back in the day, before he was that, he was Marky Mark with the Funky Bunch. And the Funky Bunch. Awesome. The, I guess we're going to start off with the question since we're at that point. Which did you, which do you value more, his movies or his music? So, right away, going into this, I was thinking his movies. But researching the podcast, I listen to some of his music, and you know what? I'll fight anybody who says Good Vibrations is a bad song. I, I, I think you fell back in love with Good Vibrations. Great song. And I dare anybody, Google on the YouTube, uh, Mark and Donnie Wahlberg lounging. They can rock. Oh, really? Yeah. Just freestyling out? Yeah, they're just doing their thing, and it's pretty great. I gotta check it out. It's pretty nice. Well, you, I guess you knew like these movies, Tanner. Uh, definitely his later movies. Later movies, too. Too young to hit the early, early ones. Do you even remember his 90 movies? Not 90s. a lot of them. He was watching Toy Story. I was, too. But I still <laughs> watched his early movies. I was watching his early movies, personally. Some of us had a good childhood. I had a great childhood not watching Toy Story. Getting tired of getting judged on this, people. You know, Toy Story 4, out now. I'm not watching it. I'm done. Here's great. I haven't seen it yet. So he started his music career with New Kids on the Block, correct? Correct. So he was actually a founding member of New Kids on the Block. Him and Donnie were the first two signed. But then he kind of dropped out before they even had five guys. That's a dick move. Well, I mean, they, I guess they should have had a better contract, I guess. I can't argue with the results. I mean, Donnie did just fine with New Kids on the Block. Yeah. And Mark and his funky bunch went off and were vibrating in a good way. And it was everybody was cool. Confession, I was a big fan of New Kids on the Block. Oh, we, oh, we, oh. <laughs> I was hanging tough and step-by-stepping. I had the concert videos. Big, I was in my brick dancing phase back when I was skinny. Jeez. Wow. While ago. Although they are making a comeback tour. Good I gotta for, check the dates. for them. I gotta check the tour date. I wonder if Marky Mark and a Bucky Bunch will be with them. That'd be a cool concert, though, to go to. That'd be an amazing concert, actually. Probably not expensive. You know, I bet you're wrong. I guarantee he's wrong. He, he, he listened to that mumble, mumble Pop or whatever it's called. These kids listen to today. It's nuts. So I'm loving this. I'm checking out his filmography. And the first thing that is not music related, although he probably did, was Marky Mark, was the Ben Stiller show. The Ben Stiller show, which I've never seen. I, re I vaguely remember this like when I was younger. And this was like hit on MTV. Was this a sketch show? Yeah, like a sketch comedy show. I wonder if this was before or after Heavyweights. That's the first time I remember, actually, no, the first time I remember Ben Stiller was Next of Kin, so, yeah. man, he was young in that movie. Yeah, but I think this was pretty early on in his career, too, so. Oh, it had to be. Yeah. 93? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, ben Stiller show. Yeah. So, we had an argument that lasted about four days, and me and Mac were going back and forth. We were trying to save it for the podcast, but we just couldn't keep fighting about it. Just kept coming up. Every time we were around each other. Yeah. What was Marky Mark's first movie? I said 
It was the substitute TV movie. He was he played Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg. And, and I disagree. I say his first movie is Renaissance Man, starring Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. I personally love this movie. Solid movie. Really delightful. Uh, in fact, I, I can't. I wish I'd seen it more recently. I can see it. Tanner, still watching Toy Story, I guess. <laughs> Wasn't even born yet. <laughs> you know, you can go back and watch movies from before you were born. It's possible. <laughs> I was born in 83. I've seen Alien made in 1979 a lot of times. That technology exists? Believe it or not. Amazing. Fun. All right, so I went to Google. Because we know Google has every answer on demand. Dr. Google. And I typed in... I typed in Mark Wahlberg. And it came up, top questions asked. And they had this thing where Mark Wahlberg answers the question. I clicked and it was like, what was your first movie? He answered me with... Da, 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 the Renaissance Man. So chalk that one up to Mac. And plus, it, it like... It's just a technically correct kind of thing. It is first its first feature length movie. Everything else was a TV movie or a TV show or a TV show or a music video. So that really is. And he is actually the first one credited as Mark Wahlberg. The first time he's credited not Mark and Mark yeah. in the Bucky Bunch. Exactly. Alright, then he, he continues uh, on his movie path, his movie career. Uh, which is starting to blossom as he hits the basketball diaries, which I am ashamed to say I have not seen. Is this confession time? Confession time. I haven't seen it either. It's absolutely crazy that neither one of us has seen this movie. It has Leo in it. I know. Leo. Leo's trash. Kid, you don't know what you're talking about. I will fight you. We're not talking about no fucking Tobey Maguire we're talking about Leo. He's just as bad as Ethan Hawke. Motherfucking Leo. If you, you're you putting Leo and Ethan Hawke in the same conversation, keep watching Toy Story. Wow. He just cries too much for me. Christ. Have you seen The Departed? Django? Why does he cry? Hey, Titanic. What we do? The bitch let him drown. He's no Ryan Gosling here. Ryan Gosling's the crier. Oh, Hollywood. every that. movie. Oh, but that's how you win the hearts. Never watched no book, but I'm sure he cries. <sighs> At least once. Has to. So, Basketball Diaries uh, got a lot of praise. I, that movie has got watch. a really huge cult following, and I've known about it for the past 20 years, but I just haven't watched it. The movie Fear. I didn't like Mark Wahlberg at that point. I no, 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 he was. Like, that's why it was a good role for him to be... Well, not... Yeah, no, because he was so good at it, you know? You wanted to punch him in the face? He's creepy. The movie's crazy. And isn't that the... Isn't the dad the guy from uh, CSI? CSI? Yeah. Yeah, CSI out in Vegas. Yeah. He was a dad in that. It's good the movie's crazy. Then we hit, let's see, he goes back to does a Hey DJ video. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Traveler, and he hits what a lot of people call his big break, Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights was a huge hit for him. I just don't, his act, it, it wasn't him acting, it was everybody else around him was the big hit. You're not wrong, it, but it, that it, was kind of the character too, like he's just like, he just dumbfounded by what's happening to him. Yeah, he's shy. And yeah. Just, but I, it, it might have been his big break. It wasn't his breakout role. Okay. I think that comes in later on in 99 because it goes the big hit. See, the big hit is Sleeper. Like, I bet you guys haven't seen this one. I've seen Big Hit, no. I know Big it Hit, directed by John Woo. It's him. Oh, a John Woo fan. Oh, With yeah. Him. Nice. Um... So it's him with, uh, what's his face? Blue Diamond Phillips, who is also brilliant in this film. Let's see what we got here. You got Elliot Gold. 
in there. Robin Doon. Christina Applegate. Avery Brooks. It's great. Yeah. Here's some, that's a decent lineup. Really fun. Uh, it's really bright. It's so 90s. It's, it's like 98, but it's like... Like, look at his name. His character name is Melvin Smiley. Melvin Smiley. I know. And like, so this is like the thing. He's a hitman, like killer dude, but he hates the idea of someone not liking him. I gotta check it out. That's kind of a weird film. It's pretty great. It's a lot of fun. It's super weird, but it's great. A lot of a lot of fun action. Him and uh, Lou Diamond Phillips playing off each other a lot. Who's a, a good guy who's fun to hate. You know what I mean? Okay. The way he can play uh, like a bad guy. It's like, yeah, oh, oh without yeah, a doubt. I can hate this guy. What you calling him a good guy, though? We'll get to that later. A good guy to hate. Okay. I, I don't know Lou Diamond Phillips well enough to call him a good guy. Oh, I thought, you, no, I thought you were talking about Mark and Mark. Never mind. No. After the big hit, we get to The Corruptor. Corruptor. So this I saw back in the day, and it's him with Chow Young Fat. Chow Young Fat. Yeah. Underrated. I wish he... He had some decent films. He's hard-boiled, the killer, replacement killers. Placement uh, killers. Other things he does where he kills people. He's just a good... Bulletproof Monk with uh, Sean William Scott. Love that movie. That's a weird movie. I love it, though. It's fun. What do you think, Dan? It's all right. I ain't seen it, but... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but then, same year, 1999, we get to Three Kings. I think this is his breakout role. This was and big for him. I'll tell you he, why. Because he was opposite... Uh, the biggest star in Hollywood. George fucking Clooney. The biggest star in Hollywood. Listen, if you can carry George Clooney's ass through a whole three, uh, two-hour film, you're winning. Ice Cube helped. Ice Cube done very little lifting in that movie. He was just there. He was the, he was the third guy. He was just like, I get to be the third guy in a movie with George <laughs> Clooney? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Winning. Yeah. This um, is a big break for me. This is when I really noticed Mark Wahlberg was in this movie. I thought he'd done a great job, uh, regardless of my feelings towards that piece of keep it clean. George Clooney, worst Batman in the history of the world. Okay, you're not wrong there. <laughs> Thank you. I will agree. Worst Batman. <laughs> Absolutely. Then we hit the yards, and then it comes up to a movie I really, really enjoy, The Perfect Storm. I watch it anytime it's on. Even though it had, again, George fucking Clooney. At least him, he does. Him and Mark Wahlberg, their scenes together are just so wonderful. It's amazing how Mark Wahlberg carries it. There's so much good acting going on all over that movie. John C. Riley. Oh, he's oh, great. Oh, and the guy from... Armageddon? The first... Uh, yeah, Armageddon. Uh, the Dark Knight. You know, Dives yeah. in Smoke. Nobody ever remembers his name. In tons of movies. They play great with anger. Really good. I just... That movie will tear at your heartstrings. If you oh, know. yeah. So yeah. that movie came out on HBO at a time when I had HBO. So I've watched that movie like a thousand times. I wish they made it. We all do. Uh, true story, though. Can't change it. But that moment at the end, when George Clooney, like, they're like, let's get out of here. And, like... You don't stand a chance. Well, but she was just like, I'm going down with this shit. Fuck this. Yeah. It's dumb. But at least I got to see Clooney die. Clooney died. And for that... Bravo. No disrespect to the people who actually died. A absolutely. That's based on a true story. Absolutely. Just humor. No disrespect to the people. talking about the movies here. Then we come to one of your favorite, Planet of the Apes. So, <laughs> wow. Can't believe you said that to me. <laughs> so, Planet of the Apes happens to be one of my favorite film franchises. The old originals. Right. I have all of them on DVD. I believe that. I even have the, the behind-the-scenes documentary on DVD. Because that's how much I love them. I almost got the, like, the TV show. Charlton Hiss. No, he's not on the show, but I meant. But he's only. Don't 
Don't get me on a tangent about those movies, man. I didn't mean to open a scar. That movie was horrible. So bad. And they got Charlton Heston to be in it, too. And just, just trying, just throwing a Hail Mary attempt to make people see the film. Well, I saw it. And actually, <laughs> so I had it on DVD. I remember the special features had all these great stuff about how they made the, 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 the fighting with the apes because they did all this awesome wire work. And I was like, man, technically speaking, there's some awesome shit going on in this movie. Like, with the makeup and stuff. Like, I'll give you that. Some serious filmmaking went in to that piece of shit. Somebody, they should have took some of that money and hired a writer. Just my thing. Because the behind the scenes, like the people who technically made that movie, the makeup, the costumes, the special effects, the, the wire work, all that stuff, everybody was top notch. Top notch. And they... It, get all my praise and because that universe looked cool like they made a universe and it, like the, everything but the movie sucked the movie sucked and there's no fault of theirs because they didn't have anything to do with that part of it let's see then we hit the truth about charlie the italian job everybody knows about the italian are you job. skipping the rock star i'll skip the rock star i'll skip the rock star. i didn't watch them i didn't watch them never seen rock star never watched rock star <sighs> Huge dear friend of the fan, she's number one on my list. If she ever hears my podcast, Jen, give me a call. Dude. I'm here. Waiting. Oh, man, Rockstar is But no, I didn't watch Rockstar. I think I've seen a scene or two. Love Rockstar. Oh really? Love Rockstar. Have you watched Rockstar yet? No. Still in Toy Story Land. So we still haven't get, seen a movie. We're gonna get to where you are, have are, a are movie. We, I was well, four years old I when think that, that movie came out. Okay, we're gonna get to this next movie and you have to have seen this one. The well, Italian job. The Italian job. Everybody's seen the Italian job. No. Why are you on this podcast? Why do we let you come here? Wait till about 2006. 2006, when he grew up to be a big boy. Unbelievable. So, they talked about a sequel to this movie for years that just never happened. Good. Leave it alone. They even had a title. It's going to be called The Brazilian Job. <laughs> you shitting me? Maybe I shouldn't be laughing at that. Maybe I'm the only one. Has that kind of mind going on right now? You're a naughty man, Jeremy Collins. I am. Some nights. I heart the Huckabees. Love this movie. It's super weird, but so fun. I heart Huckabees. What? No, 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 no. It's not a you movie for sure. You're, you would hate it, but <laughs> him and Jason Schwartzman together were awesome. Then we hit probably his... Best run of movies in his career. He's on fire at this point. We're hitting. We're starting out with four brothers just coming at you. Boom! One of my all-time just, favorites. I love this movie. I can't praise Four Brothers more. The acting, the action. It it it's got a big combination of something a guy like me wants. Just the cast. The cast is awesome. The action is great, which I want something that's intense and really catches my eye and attention. And the story gets you so invested. You're totally invested in these characters. You really give a shit. And you really get upset when, like, they get killed or when people get hurt. And you're just like... Oh, I, I win every time when Jack dies. Oh. That scene just rips your heart out. That, your that scene made the movie for me. Because it's an intense action scene. And it's it heartfelt and dramatic all at once. Right. And you're really feeling for these characters while like intense things are happening. You're sitting there and Jeremiah's running out the bay. Jack's dying. And you got Bobby and Angel just trying to fend off yeah. all these shooters that are just jackhammering the brick. And it's just like no way they're getting out of this. Yeah. Jack's and, just crying oh, and when he bleeding. Takes his last oh. that, you know what? Garrett Hedlund done a hell of a job in that role. Dude, yes. You know, he's underrated. Friday Night Lights, uh, Country Strong, Four Brothers. That guy needs to get more work. Yeah. He's really Really good. well done. Then we hit the lifetime. Something, here's something that we have learned Mark Wahlberg loves to do is true stories. Right? Now we hit Invincible with Vince Papel, Papel, however you say it, out in Philly. 
Papali, is that what this? Yes. You finally know something. You yes. finally going to chime in and help us a little yeah, bit. Because I I've seen this movie, but you know I'm not a sports guy, so I'm like, cool. Did he play football? <laughs> he was a bartender. Great story. Great life story. And they, I thought they done a real good job with it. With uh, even bringing you know, the actor to play Dick Vermeil. That was wonderful. Wonderfully did. Then we hit Scorsese. He he finally steps up to the Hall of Fame yes. level, ah, and he goes there. with Scorsese in another part. Of, and when you go with Scorsese, you're there. You're, you're there. You just do what you're told, and you just you just do your thing. You know, do what you would hire to do, and be that be that guy. Just be be that guy. Be that guy. Be that guy. It was amazing. What guy are you? I'm the guy who does his job. You must be the fucking other guy. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful line in that uh, movie. Uh, during the camera scene. And then, just the end, like, you're just like, yes! It's like he is the audience in that movie. He's just kicked back watching all this go. And he's the collective will of the audience. He's like, no, this guy. He cannot get away. No. Cannot. He could not come out of this clean. No way. So and that man, that movie, I, again, every time it's on, I will actually search for it a lot of times. Jack Nicholson, my all-time favorite. You know. You know, he. Uh, I seen a story where he ad-libbed a lot of that with Leo when they're sitting at the table and he's trying to find the rat. Yeah. And Leo was kind of a little freaked out. Because he's like, what the hell did you And Nicholson was, you know, eating flies and shit and it just fucked with Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio for you young kids, Tanner, and the greatest actors ever, but anyway, then we hit Shooter. I love Shooter. Shooter. You with us yet? Shooter's a great movie. It's like Call of Duty, the movie. Yeah. I, the part that sticks in my mind is when it gets the water, the salt, the turkey, uh, the baser, baser and the the needle who gives himself an IV and I was like what the fuck is this guy doing Are you kidding me Dude, his work Michael Pena so underrated Michael Pena I agree we killed it in this movie oh yeah and it was kind of a serious role for him but you don't see him in a lot he goes back and forth. You actually... Maybe I don't watch enough. You're not watching enough. I'm not watching You're enough. You're not watching enough. Because I, I see him in the Ant-Man kind of role. Yeah. And those roles are great. <laughs> He's great. But you need to see, like, Collateral Duty and watch him rip your heart out and make you cry. I need... Yeah, I need to check that out. But I digress. Anyways. Did we hit... No, I'm still on shooter. Sure. I, I just want to just say real quick, the scene where they're, like... Uh, Fighting off the whole platoon of guys from the house, and the shit's blowing up, and oh, yeah. the two of them out. Yeah. It's like a freaking video game. It's awesome. That was great. Danny Glover. Very seldom do you see Danny Glover play that guy. All right. He's good at it, too. I agree. He's so sleazy. We hit we on the night next with uh, Walking Phoenix. Oh, yeah. That's a pretty good movie. You do, yeah. It's going to be Joker. Soon to be Joker. I'm ready for that. Are you though? I am so ready for that. I signed. I already bought my tickets. Front row. I'm not. I guarantee you're a Jared Leto fan, bro. I okay. I do love Jared Leto, <laughs> but I don't love Jared Leto's Joker. Oh, okay. I like parts of it, but his mouth was too round. You know. Like the Joker's supposed to like have the okay. The, You're the talking lines. about this weird saying right there. I, it sounds <laughs> weird, but I mean, but if you think about it, his face is supposed to be jacked up, but it, it wasn't enough. No, he didn't have that. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm so ready for this joke. I just think it's gonna suck. Well, it cannot suck more than the next movie we're getting ready to talk about. Oh, I'm about to, are we about to take our shirts off and fight right now? The Happening. Oh, the Happening. <laughs> that movie. I don't, it's like my guilty pleasure. I are love you, this Are you movie. serious? It's great. You like, Mark Wahlberg don't even like The Happening. 
Zoe De Chanel, Mark that, Wahlberg. That, he says if he he would not do that again. That was his one mistake. I mean, it is it's easy to mock. You think? Oh, here comes wind, Dad. No, you, oh, you die. Oh, you I'm have to, sorry. You have to go kill yourself because the wind blew you a little bit. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. I will say, if you go online and watch the Honest trailer for that movie, it's one of the funniest <laughs> things I've seen on the internet. But I'll, I'll venture to... I'd like to, to say that his next movie was way worse, Max Payne. Yeah, I didn't watch it. Yeah, that movie is terrible, and, and you know you know it because it's a it's a video game movie. That's your first clue. That's video game movies clue, yeah. never do good. Never. I mean, if anyone was going to do good, it'd been Assassin's Creed. Nobody gave a fuck. No. Jumanji wasn't bad. Jumanji is a movie. <laughs> the, the new, yeah, the new one. Yeah, but it's just a. It's not based on a video game. We're cutting this. In in the new one, it's the video game. Well. Yeah, but it's not based on an actual oh, video okay. game called Jumanji. Yeah, Max Payne, nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I skipped that one. Yep. And then I skipped the next one called The Lovely Bones. I think I've heard of it, but it could fuck off. Uh, even that name makes me not want to watch it. Date Night, Cameo. Cameo. Funny uh, Cameo. It's okay. You know, this movie is okay. It's a, it's a Sunday evening watch. I'm not going out of my way to watch it, but I'm right. not going to turn it off, I guess. I don't know. I watched it. I don't really see the need to watch it again. That's the other guys. Oh, uh, his first encounter with uh, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell, what a team. They, they really out. hit it off together. Absolutely. I, you know what? I still say my favorite part of this movie is Michael Keaton. Oh, God. Yes, I have to agree. Um, anytime I get the privilege of watching Michael Keaton... Do his thing. Uh, I'm just so in, it's so, so happy. Important. I want Michael Keaton to do five films a year until he dies. I want Multiplicity too. One of my all-time favorite. Well, I, it's, it's hard to say all-time favorite Michael Keaton movie because <sighs> you got you got levels of Michael Keaton movies <sighs> and they equal. This is a scary road, man. No, nope, yeah, we're not going down that road. Okay, anyway. then we hit. We're going to skip over Entourage for right now. Yep. We're coming back to We're, that. We'll talk about Entourage here in a minute. TV series. We hit The Fighter. That's him with... Uh, Christian Bale. Christian Bale, my boy. Wonderful. I love that guy. They've done a great job on that movie. This almost didn't happen. You know, Brad Pitt and Matt Damon were all... Really? ...scheduled to uh, be in that movie. It's one of my favorite Mark Wahlberg movies. Very good He movie. trained with uh, Freddie Roach, Manny Pacquiao's manager, uh, to get ready for this the scene and you got Amy Adams and you got Christian Bale it just worked yeah I agree I really uh, like that one but his next movie is beloved throughout the world except for probably Tanner it was alright it was, it was decent Tan? yes it yep. was decent it should, it should be right up your alley it, it, you're a millennial my problem yeah. is I like comedy but I can't watch comedy more than like two or three times it just, it loses everything, and it's just a, a boring film. So in your mind, it's like one of those movies, like, I saw it, I enjoyed it, but that's in the past now. Yes. I'm not like that with Ted. Ted no, I love Ted. It's one of the movies that just keeps you laughing. The scene where they uh, do coke with the guy from Buck Rogers. Oh, uh, you mean Flash Gordon? Flash Gordon, yeah. Yeah. Oh. He runs through the wall. <laughs> it's, uh, it kills me every time. And Thunder Buddies. Thunder Buddies, yep. It's worth every... That, oh, yeah. Delightful. Love Ted. Broken City next. That was a really good movie. Was it? Yes. Okay. It was. You didn't watch Broken City? Um, I'm surprised by that. I haven't heard of it. I'm surprised by that, because you're sitting there with him and Russell Crowe side by side. You say Russell Crowe? You didn't know Russell Crowe was in this? Never even heard of it. Oh, it's good cop, dirty cop kind of thing. With Russell Crowe. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I see your eyes all over. It's a watch. Right, Let's check it. out now. You got my attention now. That's uh, Yeah, you need to see that. But then we go into a couple of... <laughs> uh, I thought my dick was bigger than it was. Goddamn pain and gain. What a giant piece of shit. It was a horrible movie. I didn't, I didn't even make it through. I, I turned it off. It why? Was, 
Why? It's one of Tanner's favorites. No. No. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> what did you like about this one? Uh, I, I just didn't like the fact that it, the way it was put together, uh, it, it really wasn't... It wasn't made for like intellectual thought. It was just kind of simple, simple-minded. Honestly, all the way through. You are so hitting it right on. They hit that way that meathead weightlifting gene way too hard in that movie. Yeah. Just wait. Save that for SNL. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a giant SNL skit where they murdered people. Yeah. Just why? No, no reason to make this movie. Then we hit another. And uh, two guns. We I, we know, went over this with Denzel. You know, I remember seeing it, and I remember liking it, but if you ask me now what it's about, I got, I got a very vague description for you. Uh, because, yeah. It's, but I remember liking it, so whatever. Then he hits his home run, Grand Slam with Lone Survivor. Love and this talking movie. about picking yourself up out the dirt after pain gain and two guns and just stepping right forward. But, you know, he was also really well supported in this film as well. Absolutely. I mean, uh, he had one of the most underrated co-stars in Ben Foster, who is one of my most favorite underrated actors. I can see that. And he's one of those guys who will just really make you look good. It's one of his true stories. Another true story, absolutely. What I liked about it is he didn't just take his lumps, because any star, movie star, is going to have duds. They're going to bomb. I mean, not everybody's Daniel Day-Lewis or John... C- What's it like? Kazalzi? Fredo? Fredo from The Godfather. Dude. Dude had seven films, five Oscars. Yep. What do you want? Shame. He died, he died of, I think, throat cancer. Yeah. Uh, young, but he yeah. was killing it when he... Wrong. So not everybody can be those two great actors that just ride off into the sunset. So he it showed he could bounce back in a big way, in a big box office hit, and doing what he does. Yeah. It showed so much that he's a box office draw that he got the lead in Transformers Age of Extinction. <laughs> the movie is so fucking long. Guys, I'm going to step back and let Mac tell you. Hey, uh, Mac, what's wrong with Transformers Age of Extinction? It goes on for exactly an hour and a half too long. <laughs> That's its biggest fucking problem. <laughs> There's pretty much a scene where Megatron practically looks at the camera and is like, I'll get you next time, Optimus. <laughs> this isn't over. And you think, like, they're about to cue the Linkin Park song, and credits, you're, you think you're, like, out of there in five minutes. It's time to go. No hand credits scene. No. But it goes on for another hour and a half, and at one point, Optimus is riding a giant robot T-Rex. <laughs> I didn't understand the dinosaurs. They're, uh, they've been living under the earth. Who's charging their batteries? Ancient technology. <laughs> it's obsolete now. Yeah, they just updated that quick and go. I can't update my phone. Updated. Last 20 minutes. Just hold on, I need to update my drivers. <laughs> it just busts an app because Optimus is there. By the way, you ever think Optimus is dictator? Communist? So, here's what I've noticed in these movies. Is the other... The other Autobots can't do shit without him. They're he- just like... Peasants to him. Yeah, he just rolls over. It's, everybody's like, oh, we can't do shit until he shows up and he saves us. <laughs> so we're all weak and feeble and helpless. What if he is the dictator? And what if Megatron is a freedom fighter? Decepticons. It's a deception, guys. Oh. Ooh. I think it's time to make that story. Because I believe you're right. And we'll get into that in a minute when we get into the last <laughs> Into night. the other horrible oh, yeah. decision to do. But on the way, we have uh, some movies I didn't see. The Gambler and Love the Gambler. I never saw that movie. Love the Gambler. I'm a gambler. Of course you saw the Gambler. So i got to watch the game. You well, love gamblers. But I learned now not to screw over a bookie, and it keeps me responsible gambling. 
is what that teaches me watching that movie. Of course, it was a redo of James Caan's Gambler back in the 70s. Okay. And they've done a real good job with it, actually. Then we come to another home run in Ted 2. Ted 2! Boom! What do you say about Ted 2? Is it better than Ted 1? I actually like Ted 1 a lot better than Ted 2. Yeah, most uh, people do. Yeah. Re- the main reason why I think that they just they tried to kind of make it to where the whole plot was making the teddy bear a person. Like, making him a legit thing. And I feel like that's what our society is kind of based on now. It is, but they're gonna play. So like they're like the problem is we are making things real, like real people. That is not real. Yes. I like Ted too. I like how they made it hilarious that they were trying to make it a person. Oh, you know, it remind the, me of Short Circuit. Touche, my friend. Wonderful, wonderful shout out to a great, great movie. And actually, it's more accurately the plot of Short Circuit too. Johnny Five is alive. Is alive. But then we get to Daddy's Home, back with Will Ferrell again. I thought I was going to hate these movies. Because it was just, I go from Lone Survivor, Mark Wahlberg, to Dad Wahlberg. And and it shows his range, yes. His comic timing is so good. Yeah. You know what I think it is? So he, like, it goes back to his music career. His cues. Yeah, and and his ability to, like, rap and rhyme and stuff like that, and just... Speak quick. quickly. Throw lines. And just throw throw lines and like be quick on his feet verbally. That's a good point. I, I like this movie. It's nice. Will Ferrell. I, I take or leave Will Ferrell in a lot of things. He wasn't... I oh. mean, Mark Wahlberg made this movie in yeah. my opinion. I agree. It, uh, at this point in Will Ferrell's career, it, it, it's not really so much as the highlight. He's not the highlight. It's how they pair him with somebody. Yeah, because he's done. Cause he, it's like, he done his shit. You know what you're getting with Will Ferrell. It's you the know? same, it's same like, shit every time, yeah, except so for that yard sale movie again. Oh, dude, that movie's great. Oh, shit. Everything Must Go. Yes, including yeah. that movie. Everything Must Fucking Go. Get out of my face. Dude, I like that movie. Now we're hitting Deepwater Horizon. True story. True, another true story. Good. Solid film. I wouldn't say it's great. Thriller. Thr- well, is it a thriller when you know what happens? Edge, edge, edge of the seat movie. This is a suspense. Yes. Suspense. That's the story. word. Okay. I'll give you that one. Then we hit another Hatred's Day. Another, another true story. True story. I guess. Of a horrible well, time I mean, in, yeah. the con- in the country. And it's like nothing disrespectful about these events where people died and stuff, but I feel like these movies are just over sensualized and I'm just like, no thanks. You feel like I'm just trying to make money off of a little bit, yeah. Because they make a lot. I was like, witty. Yeah, I just... So, I have seen Deepwater Horizon. I saw it on a cruise, but I've not seen Patriot's Day. And honestly, I'm just not very interested in it. Patriot's Day wasn't that great of a movie. But I, I feel like if it's telling the true story, it yeah. usually is not that great of a movie. And it's like American Gangster. Yeah. I, I was disappointed in it, but right. it told the truth. I like that movie. We had that talk already, but... I know. I'm just throwing it out there. So do you guys like movies that are better on true events or that have true events in it, but they mix it up a little bit? As far as, like, based on true stories, like how loose we they yes. take it? As long as they tell me it's loosely. Uh, I would rather just have the story straight out and me judge for myself whether I like or not. I'd rather them do a fantasy flick and not use the real story. Yeah. Like, for example, Bohemian Rhapsody, the band was like, yeah, this didn't happen like this at all, but they were totally cool with it. Right. And you knew, we, I knew it. I don't know how many people know going into the theater yeah. that this wasn't the true exact story. Yeah. But it's going to hit some points. I'm fine with that. As long as the people are fine with that. Yeah. But I don't think that you should just be fabricating for the suspense. You know, these guys, people were in real situations. And you're just, I think you're just trying to profit off that. Hey, if you want to profit, just write a book and intelligent people will read it and, you know, be done with it. Make it factual. I agree. And now we hit, we're going to let Mac take this over once more. Oh, God. Hold on. Because <laughs> you got to talk about one more of these. I need to finish this drink. <laughs> oh, by the way. Broke open the bottle to celebrate the 2019 season of podcast with Johnny Waka Blue. Oh, so good. Oh. Tanner's first 
ever sip of the blue. It was all right. Oh my god, oh, my kids! Kids today don't respect anything. But all right, so Transformers: The Last Night. This, if you think about it, kind of supports the Optimus Dictator model. Yeah. So at the end of the last one, Optimus has left Earth to go find his creator, do some whatever stuff. But while they're gone, everybody's just in hiding, doing just bullshit. Not really living on their lives. Until Anthony Hopkins shows up, and he's all like, Yo, I'm kind of an old white guy who likes to tell people what to do. <laughs> you know, I got some shit to tell you. Well, then, Anthony Hopkins can do that. He can. Whatever. I can't believe they got him, to be honest. Like, that's... Fucking you know, Michael Bay's throwing some money. He has to be. Fuck yeah. <laughs> well, he's... That's the thing. These movies make money. People are fucking watching them. And paying to watch them. I watched this movie on a plane. I didn't watch the last one. I watched it. I didn't watch this one. I watched uh, it. Last night, I never watched it. Watch. Didn't they uh, leave this one on, like, a suspense to where they could make another one, possibly? They, all, all of them. <laughs> that's all Michael Bay does. That's all they do. He's like, just in case... Like there's a lot of we gotta wait for Optimus, or they're looking for Optimus, or where is Optimus? Like, it's practically a fucking drinking game with that movie. If they ask where's Optimus, drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like a, another planet is crashing into Earth. Like I guess they're gonna make their home planet there, and then like so they're up way in the atmosphere, high up, and so the air's thin, and they all got these breathers. But no one uses him but Mark Wahlberg. He's just like, <laughs> Oh, God. They had kind of like gold in that damn thing. <laughs> and he's just like, Where's Optimus? <laughs> There's Optimus. And just flying around. And it just... It's so stupid. When I left, and when I got off that plane, when I saw that movie, <laughs> I got on my phone, and I looked for a petition to stop Michael Bay from making movies. And I signed it. I think we're done with Michael Bay. He we're ruined, done. He done. Once he ruined the Ninja Turtles, I'm done. Ninja Turtles and the Transformers? Just fuck you, Michael. Yeah. Kiss my ass. I mean, we're done. yeah, I love Armageddon, but fuck you. Armageddon. Armageddon. Great. That was the pinnacle. She retired there. She have stopped like there. Like Daniel Day-Lewis. It'd been done. Quit while you're ahead. <laughs> uh, mm. Then he comes back as Daddy's Home too. The Return of Mel Gibson. I was gonna say they brought they got Mel Gibson back. Good for him. Ah, he killed it though. He he played that role. That is him. Pretty much, yeah. or at least what we've come to accept as him. Yeah, kind of a douchebag womanizer. Just I'm gonna do what I want. Yep. And you're gonna like it. I have my opinion about things, and fuck you if you think otherwise. Absolutely. Then we had all the money in the world. Never heard of it. Nope. Mile twenty two. It's the family I really like. It's your uh, run-of-the-mill romantic comedy. Cool. So he's that, got some stuff coming out. Oh, uh, he, oh, he does. Six billion dollar man. They're bringing that back. He's and slated he to be Steve, Steve Austin. Austin. Yeah. I'm cool with that. You're cool with him being Steve Austin? I think he could do that. He's pretty American. Okay, we, you guys might be wondering why we skipped over Entourage, and there is a good reason if you know us. It's going to be interesting. Mike. So... As most of you probably know, he's an executive producer, and the show's basically about him. Yeah, it follows his career. Yep. To the point. His, it's based loosely based on his early career. Like, it's pretty much right there. You got the older brother on the show. He's obviously Donnie Wahlberg, trying to get a role in his movies. A former star, also is famous, also doing his thing. Johnny Drama Chase, played by Kevin Dillon, was the star first. Yeah. Before Vinny came out. So, I wanted to talk about Vinny Chase. So I started thinking about it while we were researching. His career as a character and the show. His filmography. His filmography and how it correlates to Mark Wahlberg's filmography. Okay. And I know other people have different theories about this, but this is what I kind of put together in my head while putting this together. I am very interested because I've not heard these yet. Max is going to surprise me because I just watched Entourage. 
this past winter, and I binged it. Uh, finally got a chance to do that. Took me a while. Great. Still need to see the movie, though. Alright, so I've compared, in my mind, some of the, his early movies to Benny Chase's early movies. All right, so, <sighs> in, according to uh, the internet, Benny Chase had a first, had a small break, a little small role in 2002's A Walk to Remember. I correlate to this, of course, to his first small role in his first movie, Renaissance Man. A cute movie that's really fun, lighthearted, got a good message, and he had a small role in it. Okay, I'm with you now. Okay. So then, uh, Vinny Chase's second movie was his breakout role. What put him on Holiday's radar and, and all that. What was that? And I gotta put that with Boogie Nights. Ugh! Oh, um, you're going against me. Just because of the way the movie was in the in the show, how it put him with big stars, that's what Boogie Nights did. What movie was this? What? What movie was it? It's called Head On. Head On. Vinny Chase's movie. That's right. Next, Vinny Chase did a movie called Queen's Boulevard, which was an independent film. This is obviously Basketball Diaries. And I say that with confidence about a movie I've never seen. But... I just know that was an independent film. This is an independent film, so... Yeah, Queens Boulevard's one that hit it big for him, right? Well, it's, he's already a big star, but he took that. And then after that, he did Aquaman, which I would say correlates to doing Planet of the Apes. I agree with you. But I think Queens Boulevard bombed on the show. But I get your point. But... You know what? I agree with you. You know, but ha- how about this, though? So everybody's heard of the Basketball Diaries, but was that a financially successful film? I don't think so. I think it was just a cult following. I think you're film. correct. That's one of the cult movies. So, right there, you got the first couple of his movies. Nice. Then he did, Vinny Chase did a Pablo Escobar um, biopic. We know Mark Wahlberg was biopic. So. And then, moving on, I, I really kind of, like, lose the correlation. I really only saw it in the first beginning of the his movies. But, but we, that's how the show is done. It's based on his early career. And we you know? do know Mark Wahlberg produced Entourage. Yep. He is de- it's, like, without a doubt known that this is loosely based on his early career. And that's how I see these movies lining up with Vinny Chase's movies. And it's, like, how you can kind of see him correlate. Yeah, I have a... How the career comes together. Yep. And the ups and downs. Ups and downs, yep. And actually, I really love Entourage. I think it's a great show. I, I got into it more than I thought it was. It's uh, kind of a popcorn show. I really wanted to watch it. And uh, Jeremy Piven, <laughs> you were awesome as Eric Gold. Uh, you he, know he, we are big fans of Jeremy Piven. I, I'm huge. PCU. PCU. Oh, I watch PCU all Any day. day and night. It is amazing. Love One of PCU. my favorite movies. You watch PCU? Can't say I have. Weekly Correct University. So, Matt, we went through the filmography, Tanner, we checked everything. What are your, who it, who played the best co-star role in Mark Wahlberg films? So, I'm going back with his team up with Chow Young Fat in The Corruptor. Corruptor? I. Uh, think this was a great uh, team up for him, early, especially early on in his career. I think he needed this. To, to be beside uh, an actor with that yeah. magnitude and that with, reputation. With the, yeah, with that level of ability. You know, and then he was able to team up with uh, George Clooney next. So you know, That's not teaming up with anybody. But, he might as well teamed up with Barbie. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was a really good team up for him early on in his career, and I really enjoyed it. Tanner, what do you got for him? I will say Will Ferrell. I think those two played together well. They bounced off each other well. Uh, I've seen doing research for the podcast that they're actually good friends in real life. Yeah. Um, I, I thought that together they they kind of made the movie without really any uh, anybody else's help. They've done three together now. They can throw lines. Yeah. Those two can throw lines at each other. Yeah. Like I said, quick talkers. Yeah. Just keep it going. Yeah. It's nice. Um... Me, personally, I'm going with the fighter, Christian Bale. Love Christian Hard Bale. Hard to go back with Christian Bale. Um, so but, good. You know, I'm not a huge Bale fan, 
Uh, he had Batman and uh, American Batman. Psycho. American Psycho, The Machinist. You know, the Machinist. Vice. Weird. I finally watched that last year. Oh man! It's wow. So, so many. Wow. He has got some good movies. Watch the Machinist if you get a chance. Now we're gonna get to the dirty, dirty. Oh. Hey Mac. Yeah. Question. What's going on, Jeremy? Has Mark Wahlberg had any trouble in his past? Like, with the law? You know, anything that can be disrupted. We'll say the law. I, you know, I, I think he has, has taken that, the law, and I think he has broken it before. Yeah, like, I, I heard a little bit. Kind of, kind maybe of, like kind a little of, felony type yeah. of stuff. Just once. This one time? Uh, Marky Mark. I'm blaming this on Marky Mark and not Mark Wahlberg. So Marky did this. <laughs> Marky Mark. Mark it, I, it is the alter ego of Mark Wahlberg that caused him this trouble. Marky did this. It okay. Is, that is my theory this time. So what did Marky do? Marky, uh, he didn't do much. You know, he... Chased down some African Americans, shouting, hitting them with sticks and rocks, and then some Vietnamese and hit them with sticks and rocks and bust one's head up with a stick and went to jail. And then he beat up his neighbor pretty bad to where he was charged with attempted murder. Like next door neighbor or? It just said neighbor. Um, beat him up pretty bad. Why? Uh, he did this like 25, right? He was 21 when he did when he beat the guy up. Uh, as far as uh, okay, so attempted young, murder, young and dumb. Okay, uh, young and dumb. He went to uh, actually he pleaded guilty to assault. Okay, how you go from attempted murder to assault is only in America's court system. Uh, yeah, no amazing. J. Lawyers. Uh, yeah, he had OJ lawyers. <laughs> nice. Uh, he only spent 47 days in prison. He talks on it. He's trying to get exonerated. I don't know if that's come true yet. The getting that took off. Uh, he has apologized immensely throughout his career. Uh, he has talked to the neighbor finally. And they have, I guess, settled their differences. I'm, I'm not sure if an under-table under payment was made on that. I'm sure it's very possible. He has a very sticky past. He has not done anything since he's been a big star. Okay, so it's when he was young, when he was stupid, before he was famous and had his entourage, he got in some fights. Well, actually, started some fights. Bullying. Bullying, Bullying just racist. Just being to, douching kind of, around. Yeah. Just some uh, general douchebaggery. He, yeah, he's a douche. He was running around the streets of Boston just being a douche. Do you think he's still a douche? Doesn't seem like it, since he's been able to clean yeah. stuff up. I know you're a douche if you leave the halftime of a fucking Super Bowl because your team's losing. Uh, that that makes you a douche. That's kind of douchey, yeah. <laughs> Bastard. Just because the Patriots lose to the Falcons. They came back and won, and they blamed his daughter. Oh, my daughter was sick. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. Shut the fuck up. So I think that's douche. So yeah, he's still a douche, but I don't know if he's, I don't think he's that person anymore. I think it can change. Well, you think a person can change, but then they leave the Super Bowl. <laughs> That's a solid point. <laughs> and it just makes you wonder, how well can you really know a person? Plus, he's a Tom Brady fan. I don't trust anybody that likes Tom Brady. Your brother? My brother is a Tom Brady fan. Well, that explains a lot about your brother. <laughs> and Tanner's a Colt fan. Because Peyton Manning, so don't let him try to fool you right now. I like Peyton. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the background. For the first time, we got a guy with a past and who's rocking Hollywood still. I mean, we know Hollywood's forgetful. Oh, they're very forgetful. Uh, depends on how much money you bring in. <laughs> oh, and he's bringing in quite a bit these days, isn't he? Yes, but... Fans, can you help me? Because he's still not bringing in as much as George Clooney, and that pisses me the fuck off. <laughs> I got a question. What is George Clooney doing that's making money right I now? I have no fucking idea, but as of February 2019, highest paid actor in Hollywood. Explain that shit to me. Who wants to see this guy on a screen? Somebody, please, let Did me know. Did he make some movie in February that we didn't see, and so for that 
month, like he was the highest grossing movie guy at the time that we just don't know about? I, I don't know. I, I, t- I have to assume that's I'm what's not happening. president of the George Clooney fan club. I know you're not. <laughs> no, I don't know what he's doing. I've not seen him in anything. So what, did he guest star and make $119 million for a guest appearance on The Big Bang Theory or some shit? I don't know. It drives me crazy. Now, we're ready for everybody's favorite segment, Max Facts. Boop, boop. What do you got for us tonight, Matt? All right, man. So, this is kind of a neat one. On 9-11, back in the day, yeah. 9-11, he was actually, with some buddies, scheduled to be on one of the flights that were going to be, that ended up hitting the World Trade Center. It hit the world, not just up in the air. Hit the... Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so, uh, but just last second, they decided to charter a plane to Toronto uh, for a film festival instead, and just change their planes last second. Wow, what is Seth MacFarlane supposed to be on the plane too? What? Or one on one? Of the no, planes. it was actually the very same plane. Oh, and he fell asleep in the uh, lobby, or you know, in the terminal. Yeah, and missed the flight just by chance. Wow. So we lost Mark and Seth. All in one's crazy. I fell asleep in a terminal. That close. Can't be. Um, um, got anything happier? Well, you know when he, because we were we both loved the party. I love the Depart- Yes. Absolutely. You know he got a nomination for that as supporting. Nice. I did not know that. So, Tanner has no idea what we're talking about right now. Nope, not a clue. <laughs> he got a nomination. You know what? Well deserved. Yep. What beat him? I don't know, right. but he got nominated for, and that's a small supporting role, actually, in my opinion. He didn't have much screen time. He did not. not. And when he did, he but shared it, was it with powerful. Martin. And he was sharing it with Alec Baldwin a lot. Too. Alec Baldwin, Martin Sheen, Leo. Matt Damon, Leo. He was. It was never there. Yeah. So you know who won the best supporting actor in two thousand six? Who? Your boy. Was that two thousand six? Yep. Fucking George Clooney. That <laughs> motherfucker is ruining mine and Mark Wahlberg's life. Hey, did you just say he got beat out by George Clooney? George here? motherfucking Clooney. Wow. For what movie? Syria. I didn't see it. Nobody saw it. I, I'm, I'm upset. I'm sorry. Excuse me, folks. George fucking Clooney. Who thinks he's a good actor? Where are these people at? So, um... When he, uh, that, his, uh, tax and stuff, he actually went to prison for that. For the, yeah, the attempted murder. Yeah, he pleaded guilty and went to prison. Y'all learn a lesson? Okay, so, everybody probably knows this by now, but in case you don't know, he and his brothers own a restaurant. I've never ate at uh, Wahlburger! Wahlburger! Where is Wahlburger? I think it's in Boston. There's one in Ohio. Okay. I'm not sure where else, I think. Those so, two. So, um, one of the ingredients of the one of the cheeseburgers served at the restaurant is government cheese, which is was provided to welfare recipients when he was a child. Yes. Wahlberg said he wanted the burgers to be honest and accurate, reflect the working class meals he and his siblings were raised on. That's great. You think it, it, yeah. Yeah. I'd wrap my head around it for, for yeah. a second, as long as I don't use government cheese. But, no, it sounds like they do. But, like, for one of them, not all of them. Oh, okay. Because I don't want to order it. Yeah. That, that thing better be free. Actually. <laughs> or maybe it's all of them. I don't know. I, I guess we got to go to Wahlburgers to find out. I got We got to go check it out. Dying for a cheeseburger. I wonder if we can get a cent up here. That's a long way to travel for a cheeseburger. Door dash it. See how much your meal is. <laughs> His uh, favorite movie is Hard Times with Charles Bronson. Good old Charles Bronson fan. That's when Bronson's in jail. Oh, dude. Char- when's Charles Bronson not in jail? He's actually great friends with uh, Will Ferrell. Uh, yeah. Even though they've done three movies together, they, uh, yeah, they're just good buddies. Mm. He actually used to be good buddies uh, with, uh, what's his face? Um, that dude. Will Smith, back in the day. Back when his Marky Mark and Will... Smith and, and the the Fred Fred DJ Jazzy Jeff. Yeah, all those guys. That'd Marky Mark and Fresh Prince were together. friends. Yeah. Really? DJ Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince. Oh, they had great stuff. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. 
It's from the heart. That's all I really got. It wasn't that mumble rapping stuff you guys love. Okay. So, let's sum up Mark Wahlberg real quick. He's America's bad boy that we all love. Bad boy turned good. He's he's America's Dylan. Yeah, you're not wrong. Douche. It was douchebag early. Flipped it around. He's that guy everybody hates when they first meet him, but then after a while they're just like, I love that guy. Oh, Jeremy Collins. I get that. I know how that reference Sure, goes. okay. <laughs> wonder if he has the biggest head as you. I bet he does. <laughs> so, um, great singer. Had big hits. Whether he likes his music or not. He, he, he killed do it. it. He like, came good on. Vibrations is great. Guys, check out Lounging with him and Donnie Wahlberg. Right. He came in. He, uh, you know what? He done a great job in his early acting. When you hit Scorsese, in my book, if you're good enough for Scorsese, you're good enough for me. Yeah. I mean, he got a nomination with that, and I mean, Scorsese led him through it. But yeah, you know, you're right. It's good if Scorsese <laughs> sees the talent in you, and it showed because you got a nomination for doing it. Yeah. You you got it. You're there. You, you have it, kid. You have something. I don't know what it is, but you got it. <laughs> yeah. Mark Wahlberg's got it. He got it. And then he he hit his bombs like every other. There's plenty of the happenings and contrabands and it's just it happens. It's a it, numbers game. Every actor. You know, it's a numbers it's game. It's a numbers game. It's like hitting on chicks. Yeah. You're going to get turned down sometimes. So I guess that's Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg, you know. Great. Ch- he's charitable. By the way, we didn't Super touch on that, but let me let me touch on that real quick in this Good summary. Call. Great charitable. He runs charitable donations, and he is very involved in kids that have rough childhoods and hard bring-ups. He really is there for them. So I'll give him props for that. I think he teamed up with uh, Wounded Warriors, too, after doing uh, The Long Survivor. Survivor, which was a great movie. That movie was intense. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I guess that... Kind of wraps us up for our first podcast today. Dude, it's great to be back. Summertime. It is awesome to be it's back. It's warm out. Summer's back. Sunshine. We're talking about movies again. Movies. So, what's Talking about movie? actors. So, who's next? Next? Oh, let me drop the bomb early. Let's do it. Let's next do a preview. Is the legendary, the wonderful, the man, the comedic genius, Bill. Murray. Bill fucking Murray, guys. Oh, I can't oh. wait to get into Bill Murray. We're going to have some so drinks, much. and we're going to d- dive into his genius and... And his temper, apparently. Oh, his temper. Oh, his temper. Yeah. Unfortunately. I don't want to bring us down already, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's got uh, some views in his life. But it's going to be a good time. I think it's going to be interesting. Be Tanner will not be here. Tanner is flying back to yep. West Virginia Tuesday. It's great having you, Tanner. Thank you for hanging out Thank with us tonight. Me. I wish you were older and seen some movies, but it still worked. Good. You did okay, kid. <laughs> you brought in some valid not, points. <laughs> first podcast wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't that bad. Let us know how bad Tanner was in the comments. We're just curious. We're curious if it was worse than our first episode. Right? With Tom Hanks, if you haven't seen that, go see it. Although that was pretty good, but I think we had, rocked that. I, believe. I think Tom, Tom Hanks, Hanks scared you guys. Tom Hanks that's scared what, us. That's what Tom Hanks do. <laughs> that's what he does. Anybody looks good next to Tom Hanks. That's right. All right. Uh, all right. So long. See you guys next week. I'm Jeremy. Feeling good. I'm Mac. Looking good. I'm Tanner. Being good. <laughs> <laughs>